Decompiling any C# -sharp Windows binary is not difficult. However, tools like ILSpy require a Windows machine. If all you have is a Linux box, there's another tool called CodeMorex Decompile. Before covering the pros and cons of each tool, first compiling all the test C# -sharp binaries. I have shown how to cross compile C# -sharp in a previous video, but this gives me the chance to show how to statically compile C# -sharp binaries in Visual Studio. But before that, I'm going to first cross-compile the first two test binaries on our Linux machine, which is just the same as in Visual Studio, just this TCP reverse shell. So if we do head with the first 20 lines, TCP, we can see it's the exact same program. So first I'll do mono csc dash o mono compile rev shell dot exe and then TCP rev shell. It gives us a warning, but as before, it compiles into our executable. The next way I will do it is with .NET. So I will make a new project, .NET rev shell, just to stay organized, and then do .NET new console. .NET new console. We have our project do .NET new solution file to create the solution file and then .NET solution add the .NET project to our solution file. The final step will be to compile it. So .NET publish winx64 publish single file true self contained true and we'll set it as a release. All right, we have our, oh, I didn't copy over the uh, program, did I? Copy to program. We'll recompile that real quick. Go into copy bin release net win publish our reverse shell back directory. Now we have our two compiled binaries. Next I'll go back into Windows into Visual Studio to demonstrate how to statically compile C sharp in Visual Studio. We will copy all this code just to make sure and create a new project to start over. So we'll go to File, New Project. We'll filter for C Sharp. And the first one will just be a console app. If you're statically compiling a console app, it'll be a little bit different versus a console app.NET framework. They are very different and important later on in the video. So we'll start with the console app. We'll just do console rev shell windows will be our project name. Go next. You can pick a different version of .NET Framework here, but .NET 6 is fine. We can save the previous project, that's fine. Slap in our code. And then to make it a standalone binary, what we need to do is go to our project file, which is right under the purple solution file. Right click, do you publish. Select the target as folder, since we're not going to do it on a remote instance, do folder again. If you want to change the folder location, that's fine, but the default is perfectly fine. If we're just doing it on our own machine, wait for that to finish, and then close the window. Now to create it as a standalone binary, we do show all settings, deployment mode from framework dependent to self-contained. We set the target runtime to our architecture, which in this case will be Windows x86. And then the last step is to go under the file publish option and check mark the produce a single file. Hit save. And then to build our binary, we'll just do publish. And voila, we have a statically compiled C sharp binary. To move the files from our Windows machine into our Linux machine, I will go back to here, go updog spawn a simple web server, go to Firefox, refresh, and now we will go here, 
copy the compile path, choose a file, grab our payload, upload. All right, one more binary left to compile. So we'll go back into Visual Studio and re-grab this code. Go to File, New Project. But this time we're going to do a console app.net framework. It's much easier to create a standalone binary because instead of having to do publish, we just set it as a release and compile. So windows.net compile rev shell. Create, slap in our code. And then all we need to do is go to the debug tab, set it as release, and then build. Copy the path, upload our file, and upload our reverse shell. Now that we have all of our files, we will start by showing how to decompile it with code Marex decompile on Linux. So go back into our terminal. And with an empty directory, we need to grab our tool. If you don't have it on your system, first go into their GitHub page, going to release, and grabbing the Linux tar gzip or whatever version you need for your operating system. In this case, we just need the Linux one. So we do copy link address, go back to our terminal, and we just do wget and then the path of the web resource. Zoom in a little bit now that we have this. Now we will extract Z for gunzip and then F for file code. And then the reason why we do it in its own directory is that when we decompile, it's not not look right. Contents. Ah, uh, did I grab the wrong one? Ah, I grabbed the wrong one. Okay. Let's grab the right one. Wget the Linux one. Tar extract gunzip file. And now the reason why we put it in its own directory is because we have all these files. But what we need is just code Marex decompiled this executable that's already CH modded for us. And then when we run it, it will create this window. All we have to do is just say open assembly and then navigate to it, which will be in temp, C sharp, and we can open our assembly. So we'll start with the Linux with mono compile. It works as normal, kind of like what you would see with iOS Spy, but in a different interface. And also this is on Linux, which is nice. And then we can look at the program and here's our reverse shell. Let's move on to our next assembly. which will be the .NET reverse shell. As you can see, we have an error. The issue with code Marek decompile is that even though tools like ILSpy can decompile C Sharp that are not valid CLR assemblies, code Marex doesn't have that ability. So the one we compiled with .NET on Linux does not decompile in this tool. Let's go back and try another assembly. Let's do the windows.net one, which is the console app.net framework. And this one is a valid CLR assembly. So we are able to decompile it. However, if we go back to open assembly, if I try to just do the console app that was not the .NET framework version, like before, it's also not a valid CLR and it fails. So we will test and show that even though they're not valid CLRs, all the binaries can be analyzed within ILSpy. So first, we'll make a directory, test bins, move or copy to test bins, zip, all bins.zip, test bins. in a simple zip file. Perfect. 
go back to our Windows machine, go into make their Windows tasks, demo bins, make their, we'll just put it here, I guess. Demo test bins. CD here, and then we'll just do wget our zip file from the updog web server. Except I'm not in PowerShell, so we're gonna have to use curl. Curl. And then to open this up in Explorer without trying to navigate to it, we can just do Explorer and then dot, which will open it in this directory, which is a kind of a neat trick. Let's see, extract all. All right, we have all of our binaries. Now we can do copy this path go into IL spy do you open go over here and for the binaries that were not able to be decompiled because they were not valid CLRs which is the Windows .NET compile and the console uh, rev shell windows it still works because IL spy is based I will run through IL spy with each of the other three files. So like before, open .NET rev shell. It decompiles without any issue. File, open, mono compile. It still works. File, open, Windows, .NET compile rev shell. And all of them open just perfectly fine. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching and shout out to Pebble for showing off this tool originally during their live stream on Twitch. I hope to see you in the next one and take care.